All right, we are ready to look at the Check Your Understanding page and identify the learning targets. And the first learning target is that you can identify uh, information about categorical data. You want to report the following information. Frequency, which is your count, how many do you have? You can also report relative frequency. Which is percent. And you can do that in a bar graph. Or a pie chart. Two way tables are one way to represent your table data. And it doesn't have to just be two rows, two columns. It just means that it is a row by column matrix setup. And depending on where your numbers are sitting, remember these are totals down here at the bottom. And these are totals out here. You're going to get a, three different kinds of relationships. One of them is called a marginal because it comes from the margins, and that is the fraction of the B value over the C value. So the row total divided by the table total. A joint distribution or a joint frequency is A, the individual cell, where it's intersecting over C, the total for the table, and your last one is conditional, and that is when you have an, an individual cell in the table over a marginal total. So this is conditional based on which row or column you happen to be in. And when we're looking for association between two variables, We want to see that one affects the other. So let's look at an example here. This is your check for understanding. And normally what we'll do with these is let you work on them independently first, and then I'll post the the solutions, but this is the first week, so I want to kind of model for you what we're looking at. Uh, students at a local high school were asked which gaming system they preferred, the PlayStation 3 or the Xbox 360, or neither. The graph at the right shows the results, and your job is to explain why the graph is misleading, and we did talk about this a little bit in class, but there's a couple of things on here that we have a problem with. The first is my scale doesn't start at zero. And the other thing that I have a problem with is that when they resized these images, they should have stacked multiple PS3s and multiple Xboxes that were the same size. You can see how the width here and the width here makes it look like PS3 is a lot more than it is because it's so much wider. So we're going to say that the vertical scale doesn't start at zero. So the difference in height is exaggerated. And it appears that neither group is zero percent. And we don't know that that's actually the case because all we know is that it's less than 44.5. Also, the, we don't like to use photographs 
They should be avoided. No, that's exactly the opposite of what they did in elementary school. I gave you all these cute little pictures. As long as the pictures are the same size, you can stack them like dots. But we're grown-ups now, so we don't have to have that. They're cuter for magazines, but they're often misleading. All right, our second example goes back to the two-way tables and the distributions. They're the relative frequencies. An article in the Journal of American Medicine Association reports the results of a study designed to see if the herb St. John's wort is effective in treating moderately severe cases of depression. The study involved 338 patients, and anytime you see a number for a count, you better underline it or highlight it, who were being treated for major depression. The subjects were randomly assigned, that is important, we'll talk about more why later, to receive one of three treatments, St. John's wort, Zoloft, or a placebo, which is inactive, for an eight-week period of time. The two-way table summarizes the data, data from the experiment. Okay, so up here at the top, we have treatment, and on the side, we have change in depression. Those are our two variables. We have levels based on the type of drug or the level of depression response. So our first thing that we want to do is summarize the table. Well, they told us there's 338, so we know 338 goes over here. And right now we want to know what proportion of subjects in the study were randomly assigned to St. John's Wort. So we're going to come over here and we're going to add up all of these. And that is 113 out of... 338, if we wanted to put it in decimal, that's 0 0.334. And we would say there are three treatments, so about one-third should be assigned. So, for the why does this make sense? That's about a third. Find the distribution of change in depression from the subject in this study using relative frequencies. So we have full response, and I'm going to use FR for that. And if we total all of the full response across, we get 91. So that's 91 out of 338, which is about 2.69. And then we have partial response. And if we over here, we add all these up, we get 55. So that is 55 out of 338 which is about 163, and then we have no response, and that row totals to 192, which is approximately 0.568. What percent of student subjects took Zoloft and, that makes it, a joint, not a conditional, anytime we see joint, it's we're going to connect two rows and full response. So what I'm looking for is full response and Zoloft, and that is right there at 27. So we have 27 over 338 again, which is about 0.08 or 8%. And they specifically said percent. Go ahead and change it. Hopefully y'all remember how to go from decimal to percent. Um, you have an individual assignment that's very similar to this that you're going to complete in Schoology under assignments. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.